Okay, so looks like we're getting quite a few people now, so we can probably get started. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to the DTC Visitor Seminar, which will be given by today's speaker, Yvette Hernandez Banos. Um, Yvette is a PhD student of meteorology at the National Institute of Space Research, or INPE, in Sao Paulo, or uh, San Jose dos Campos, Sao Paulo, Brazil, where she will be defending her thesis next week. Um, Yvette has, has also uh, joined the Mesoscale and Microscale Meteorology Lab at NCAR as an associate scientist. Um, Yvette joined the DTC visitor program back in March 2020, and after completing her first visitor project, gained an extension to do the work she will present today on data simulation in the prototype RRFS um, in the Amazon. Um, after the talk, we will have a time for questions, so let's hold them until then. And I um, also want to say that the recording will be posted online in the DTC YouTube channel. Um, so Yvette, yes. I think you can go ahead and take it away. Okay, thanks Will for the introduction and thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, before I get started, I would like to thank my DTC hosts, my PhD advisor uh, for the guidance uh, for the development of this research and I would like to also acknowledge uh, people at NOAA, NCAR and DTC and the DTC um, VISTA program for the um, support uh, for this project. So in the Amazon basin, uh, coastal, uh, uh, coastal squall lines, um, they develop uh, along the, the, the coastline here, the, the northern coast of South America. And they can see uh, in the satellite imagery, imagery as these continuous clusters of convective cells. And they propagate inland uh, along the sea, uh, sea breeze uh, front um, circulation. And they can even sometimes reach the central part of Amazon. And uh, they can reach as far as the Andes, uh, 40, 48 hour after the initiation. Um, Amazon, uh, it acts as a source of moisture, as it is well known for other regions, for example, for the southern east of uh, South America, as can be seen here in this uh, animation through the low level yet. And uh, uh, Amazon coastal squall lines, and in general, most studies uh, over this area, over the Amazon, they have been uh, studied through um, using uh, data collected during field campaigns through reanalysis and satellite derived products. Especially the data collected during uh, field campaigns are invaluable because they has uh, provided a large amount of data that otherwise wouldn't be obtained. And results from this study, from those studies, um, have uh, helped to improve gre greatly our understanding and, and knowledge uh, about the environmental condition about, and about the systems that develop of the, of, over this region. However, despite of all these efforts, uh, it is also well known that the deep convection and the diurnal cycles of precipitation and convection over this area, it is still not well represented in the models, in the global and regional models. Uh, also, uh, because of the lack of uh, dense and the av uh, availability of data over this region, it is hard to find in the literature uh, numerical studies using data simulation. And that uh, also impacts the representation of the systems and the associated uh, precipitation uh, in the uh, global and regional forecast. Um, it is also well known that uh, NOAA is transitioning toward a unified uh, model through the UFS, the Unified Forecast System, in which the same dynamical core, the FE3, it is used for all the applications from global to regional and uh, for uh, the different uh, temporal scales. Uh, specifically, the UFS application for regional and convective scales is the rapid refresh forecast system, uh, which is intended to cover a similar domain as the operational rapid refresh system. Here, the figure on the right, it shows Oops. It shows the in the uh, green box is is the current domain of RAP, and the yellow box it is the intended uh, domain that will be covered by RAP. So here we can notice that part of northern South America is currently covered by RAP and will be also covered by herd by RAP. So uh, one 
a question that is plausible to ask is how well can Ruf represent the initiation and development of Amazon Coastal Square Alliances? These systems are known to be one of the main uh, rain uh, producing systems in this area. So in order to answer this question, uh, this study aims to investigate the data simulation framework of the current prototype RFS and also the impacts on uh, forecast of uh, an Amazon Coastal School Line case study. So this presentation today will be focused on two main parts, one uh, dedicated to the case study selection and another part for the sensitivity experiments aiming to assess different data, simula data simulation algorithms and configurations and ultimately uh, ev evaluate the impacts on the uh, precipitation forecast. So um, for the case study selection, it's important to say that this was an important part of the study because due to the availability of the data, um, we don't have kind of, um, we don't have uh, availability of, you know, many radar data or severe reports that we can just uh, take and analyze. So here we decided to elaborate a methodology that would lead us to the case that we will uh, simulate later in the sensitivity experiments. So here this uh, methodology, it starts by determining determine the uh, onset and end of the dry season. Um, it is well known that differently than mid latitudes in the tropics, seasons are uh, determined by the uh, variability of the um, of the rainfall instead of the temperature as it is uh, over mid latitudes. So here we use the methodology of Marengolo et al. 2001, in which uh, the pentads of accumulated precipitations are calculated. Uh, uh, and, and then um, according to some thresholds, we can determine when the dry or the rainy season ends uh, or began. Um, after we have the, this period from this first step, we then proce proceed to execute the four track uh, tracking system in which uh, we will uh, track all the convective systems using the GOES 16 infrared uh, imagery with a horizontal resolution of two kilometers and every every 10 minutes. W when we have all this, this uh, systems tracked, then we will identify or try to identify squad, li squad lines uh, using the methodology of Cohen et al. 1995 and also Oliveira and Oyama 2015. So for the first uh, step here, we consider the uh, the area here in this uh, gray uh, circle, which is co correspond to the uh, mouth of the Amazon River, and this this is one of the points considered in the uh, the work of Marengo Marengo et al. And this uh, solid black line corresponds to the uh, Amazon basin limits according to the race race uh, network, and here on the right it is the um, the rainfall uh, according to the the pentads the 73 pentad pentads along the year. This is for uh, 2020. And we here highlight in this orange the period in which we have um, less or, or equal uh, 4.5 milli millimeters uh, in average per day. So here we uh, can clearly see that this is the, the dry uh, season period for this year, which corresponds to the pentads centered between the 21 June, 21 June to 21 October in 2020. Then with that period, we uh, proceeded to execute the four track system. But before we execute four track, we uh, needed to apply uh, quality control to filter some images with uh, some bad uh, pixels as it is shown here in this, the lower bottom of the figure. And we filter out uh, brightness temperature pixels with brightness temperature below 180 uh, Kelvins. So here it is. Um, this figure shows the genesis of uh, all the system inside the Amazon basin according to the limits show before. And we can see that the systems, they have a preferred range region for genesis here in the northern <coughs> northwestern part of the Amazon toward the western part of the Amazon for this uh, time of the year. But we can also see some uh, some genesis here along the coastline, which is actually uh, what we want. We want to analyze the, the, the system that had uh, initiation along this uh, the coastline. So here, in order to see in which month that uh, we had that um, uh, preferred uh, genesis, we here show 
uh, the monthly distribution here we didn't show the, the, the few days from June in order to show a more fair comparison and here we can see that along the coast we have uh, we have system developing uh, along all the four months however we can see that here in July we have the higher uh, frequency of systems being initiating along this area and this is uh, uh, this results is uh, corroborates uh, results from other other studies. So, um, for the month of uh, of um, here for all months, we uh, follow the Cohen and et al. Uh, methodology in which we classify the squall lines according to the propagation inside the continent as coastal line convection squall lines type one and type two, and here we take into account this uh, region in the this blue uh, polygon where we uh, are trying to find uh, quantify those systems that had initiation here inside this area. So here on the right we we, we uh, show the distribution of these uh, systems classified by these three types along the three months and we can see that July uh, it shows the a higher amount of systems being um, initiated uh, in July and also in the different three categories. Here we also show the maximum duration here on the right and in average the system had um, a duration of 12 hours. So with the um, knowing that uh, most of systems had initiation in July, then we proceeded to try to identify squall lines uh, just for results from the uh, from July. And here we applied the methodology of Oliveira and Oyama. Here this is a, what they call an objective met method. Uh, using the four track outputs. So um, here we show that the, this methodology is appropriate for the identification of the main uh, main systems associated with this squall line. Here we can see that they have uh, initiation times very close to each other. And it is important to mention that four track it only identifies uh, individual systems and the evolution of those those systems uh, along the time. However, since this this squall lines they are this continuous close it is difficult to find uh, all the clusters that had uh, that were associated to the same system. So it, this methodology will always have a subjective uh, analysis, uh, which of course can be improved in the in the future. But from the analysis that we did for the month of July, we found that these three systems were um, initiated in uh, close times and close regions. Uh, uh, but here in the in the panel A, we are very satisfied with this with this um, with this result because it actually showed the linear um, um, shape of the of the system. So for this 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 uh, case, we uh, we went to the satellite images to see the development of the system, and we can see that the initial cells along the coast were observed since the little bit before uh, 17 UTC and then we can see the development of the system through the next hours. Um, this 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 clearly follows what is we can be shown, we can be found in the literature that we have here the initiation between 19 and 21 we have the intensif intensification of the system and at 23 we have we can see that this is line it has reached the maturation at, at 01 UTC we can see that the system it is more uh, inland and it uh, some part of the system has uh, it is uh, they ha it has some dissipation and four hours later we can see that the system it it is found um, more um, toward the uh, western uh, Amazon and it starts to merge with other system that were in in the in the front part of this one so with this with this um, this development in mind, we try to simulate this system and see how the RFS is um, captures um, or represent this system. So here we uh, uh, um, configure this uh, domain here on the right, uh, in which we can uh, we can capture the main, all the the system here developed al along the coast. Um, and we can also uh, capture what is happening here on the ocean and also on the west part of uh, of Amazon. Um, we the experiments they are executed from the 00 UTC on July 4th 
until 21 UTC on July 6. And we use uh, GFS initial and lateral boundary conditions. And this uh, domain, it has three kilometers of horizontal resolution and 64 vertical layers. Um, since RFS is based on the UFS short range, short range weather application, here we use the limited area capability of the FE3 dynamical core. And for the data simulation um, system, we use the GSI and we use six hourly uh, GDAS observations and GDAS 80 member ensemble for the coherence, for the ensemble um, coherence. So, well, how we configure the cycling configuration? We only, since we are using GFS, uh, um, forecast uh, GFS lateral boundary conditions, we only have uh, those every three hours. So we decided to configure a cycling configure a three hourly cycling configuration with 24 hour forecast at each cycle. So um, here we also follow the cycling configuration that um, is, uh, is in, in development in the uh, GSL, and this is trying to follow what is being used in RAP, of course, a simplified version in which we use call star every 12 hours. This is at zero UTC and 12 UTC, and we use warm stars in the hours in between. And that was in between the background for the data simulation will come from the three hours forecast from the previous cycle. So here, uh, in order to decide which physics we are going to use for our experiments, we run uh, several experiments uh, testing different physics. And here I'm only showing uh, the two experiments uh, testing the FE3HER and the GFS version 15P2 uh, physics, which are available in the common community physics package in the short range weather application. Um, here, um, it is important to mention that these two physics, they, the main differences are uh, the LAN scheme, the PBL scheme, and the, micro, the macrophysics scheme. So here on the right, we show in the first row are the observations from the CMOR precipitation estimates, and the next two rows are results from the experiment uh, with the HER, uh, the HER parameterizations, and the, uh, the last one is with the GFS-based uh, parameterizations. So here is uh, it, the results are it clearly shows that the GFS, it overestimates the, the precipitation coverage and also its intensity. Uh, but on the other side, we can see that the her uh, the experiment with her parameterizations, it under forecast the, um, what is observed in the uh, precipitation estimates. However, since this experiment with the GFS physics is uh, over forecasting kind of too much, we decided to use the, um, her based physics in the uh, experiments with data simulation. It is important to mention that this experiment here, it is the experiment without data simulation. So this will be our no DA and baseline experiment. So here it is the list of experiments that we conducted in this in this uh, study, and we have here kind of different groups of experiments. The first uh, experiment is the NODA that was explained before. The second set of experiments is testing the hybrid weight, the relative weight of the ensemble background error covariance. We tested uh, 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 these three weights. Um, and we uh, keep here the uh, localization scales as uh, it is used uh, operationally in RAP and HER. Uh, and the next set of experiments, we uh, change these localization scales. This is because since we don't have uh, many observations on, in this domain, we want to investigate if we increase the localization scales in the horizontal and vertical, what will be um, the results in our analysis. And we also conducted two, two more experiments. One experiment, the ClipSat experiment, it is um, using the, the supersaturation removal option in GSI, in which this is a constraint wing in which we uh, limit the, the specific humidity to, e, to its uh, saturation value. This is in the background uh, in the, in, during the um, during the minimization of the cost function. And a last experiment here, this pseudo experiment, it is used, it is testing the PBL seed observation function in GSI. And this function is to uh, extend the surface um, innovations through the PBL depth. However, we will see through the, um, the results, I will only show a last, res a last result from these experiments because uh, results were kind of very similar to, to this 85%.
So for the forecast verification, this was kind of a very, very difficult part of this study. We used the uh, method um, MED tools and we use the six hourly GDAS observations, which are point observations. Um, and we use the CMORPH data, which is gridded observations, uh, uh, hourly observations. And for the GDAS observation, we, um, with the help of Michelle, we uh, were able to have um, output uh, hourly outputs for this uh, verification. So uh, getting a little bit into the results, here uh, it is the um, observations distribution. We can see uh, here uh, results from um, temperature, wind and radiance. And we can see here, if we focus on this panel A, we can see how sparse it is our data in our domain. Um, and this is from uh, conventional sources. Uh, we can see that uh, from wind from different sources, we have a little bit more of coverage and we have some passages of uh, satellites, so we have some radiance coverage. So taking a look to the performance of the analysis, this is for the experiments testing the different hybrid weights. Here we uh, show the RMS of the um, Omenos A as this uh, red solid line and the Omenos B as the this uh, black solid line. The bias uh, follows the same color, but it is this dashed line. Um, so here, the first thing I want to uh, bring your attention is that uh, the ominous A and ominous, ominous B, they have unexpected behavior in which the analysis have uh, lower values than the ominous B here. Um, and we can also um, observe that this kind of follow a, a diurnal cycle, this uh, error um, behavior. And when we compare the ominous B with the um, uh, RMS of the ominous B um, from the 3 um, um against this 85% experiment, we can see that uh, the hybrid system gives us uh, lower errors and um, also lower bias. And uh, this result here from the 85%, it chose to be um, slightly better than the 100%. That's why this um, only these two are shown. So um, analyzing the uh, analysis increments uh, um, between these three experiments, here we show the analysis increment for temperature in the first row and the specific humidity in the second row. So here we can see that the results from the experiment, uh, the three divar experiment, it shows analysis increments, which are um, kind of uh, very smooth when we compare with the experiments uh, with the, with the uh, a, a higher uh, weight of the ensemble background error covariance. And as we go through the C, to the 100%, we can see that the analysis increments are more noisy. However, we can see that here at 85%, it still have uh, more details, but uh, it is less noisy than these 100% uh, results in both, in both variables. So um, taking a look to the one hour accumulated precipitation, uh, here we show the results from the cycle initialized at 15Z. This is uh, two hours, uh, uh, the cycle, it is two hours before uh, the system was in, 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 initiated. And these are results for the two hours, four hours and six hour forecast. This is for uh, the three experiments with the different hybrid weights. And we also show here the results from the NODA experiment in the bottom, in the bottom row. Uh, in the first row, it is, um, here we are showing the results from the, the uh, precipitation estimates. So here, if we compare uh, the experiment without data simulation and with data simulation, we can see that the data simulation clearly improves the coverage of the, um, the, precip the precipitation against this experiment without data simulation. However, when we analyze these three experiments, we can see that the 3 divide experiment, it um, um, over forecast the precipitation coverage and also the precipitation uh, intensity. Uh, um, results are um, more better uh, in this experiment with 85% and in, in the experiment with 100%, but we can see that this experiment with 85%, it is slightly, is slightly better than this one with uh, 100%. Here we will see that the differences between the experiments are um, some kind uh, very, very, 
very small, and which is basically as we saw because we don't have much much data in our analysis to our analysis. So analyzing the surface surface verification in terms of the RMSC and bias for the three hour forecast. This is for two meters temperature and for two meters uh, dew point temperature. And these are also results from these uh, hybrid weight uh, experiments. We can see clearly the uh, cycling, the diurnal cycle of the of the errors, the RMSC and also the bias. And we can see that the, exper the experiments with data simulation, especially this one with the here, this 85%, uh, it uh, uh, gives uh, better results. However, we can see that during the afternoon hours, the NODA experiment per performs better. This can, this can be related to uh, the amount of data that is used to mm, do this verification and also to uh, run uh, our experiments with data simulation at, uh, uh, during the afternoon hours. We know that convection is, is occurring and these uh, forecasts are harder to, um, to, to predict. So um, analyzing results from the second set of experiments, changing the uh, localization scales. Here we show results from the, the experiment changing the vertical localization to nine, to nine uh, layers. Then in the middle, the experiment uh, changing, changing the horizontal localization to 330 kilometers. And the last experiment changing both the horizontal and vertical. Uh, localization scales. So here we can see that when we only change the vertical localization, we can see uh, slightly more uh, features, uh, more um, details than we saw in the experiment with uh, uh, the basic um, three and 110 kilometers in the, in the horizontal. Uh, but when we increase the horizontal localization to 330 kilometers, we can see more um, more details this one uh, this one here show mo more noisy results but this one when we combine these two uh localization scales increase we can see uh also the fe the features but uh, it is less noisy than this one here in the middle also analyzing the uh, um, statistics of the ominous A and the ominous B. Here it results from the experiment with 85% and the experiment when we change the horizontal the horizontal and vertical localization, we can see that the results are pretty uh, very, very close to each other. However, we can see uh, some improvements in the, um, in the spikes here shown on the ominous, ominous B. So taking taking a look to the one hour accumulated precipitation among these three, uh, four experiments, here we, we can see that this first experiment changing only the um, vertical localization, it gives slightly pretty similar results as this 85% experiment. Um, however, when we increase the, the, the horizontal localization, it gives us a better, slightly better coverage and uh, this experiment changing both, it gives us slightly better coverage. So here, we, we, what we can uh, see is that increasing in a general, this is a general point of view that increasing the horizontal and vertical localization, it actually helps us to uh, improve the, the precipitation forecast in its uh, coverage and intensity. Uh, the verification, the surface verification for these experiments show a uh, similar pattern than uh, the other experiments. However, we can see that they are kind of grouped because they follow the 85% uh, experiment. And at some hours, we can see that the impact is pretty neutral. Um, and in the hours, during the afternoon hours, we can see that this experiment changing both horizontal and vertical localization, it performs worse than the others. Um, so it, 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 is, it actually means that um, we still need kind of more data in order to uh, perform this verification and that, well, one thing is uh, the results from the forecast when we are uh, uh, kind of uh, visually uh, uh, comparing the things, but in this uh, against point observations, when we don't have many observations, we don't get uh, th those encouraging results. Um, 
here analyzing the uh, specific humidity differences. This is from the experiment uh, when we activated the clip saturation uh, function in GSI and against the experiment without this function. We can see that uh, uh, this uh, area here where we, ha where we have more precipitation occurring, we have the, the, the main differences in terms of uh, the specific humidity that it is being clipped uh, in, in, this, in this experiment clip set. And results from this, uh, these two experiments, this Clipsat experiment and this 85% experiment, it shows that uh, uh, the impacts are mainly in the four and uh, six forecast for the two hour forecast, the improvements are uh, slightly less. But here we can see that there is uh, uh, some improvements in the, um, in the uh, coverage of the precipitation along the coast and also here in this area the west part. So if we analyze the results in terms of the ETS and bias, also for one hour accumulated precipitation um, for different um, precipitation threshold, this on the left it is for threshold higher, uh, larger than 0 0.01 inches in one hour and the, the, the these two panels on the right for uh, larger than 0 0.25 inches, we can see uh, that this larger threshold are very hard uh, to predict. We can see that there is overall an under forecast and a very low performance of the system for this uh, larger threshold. And here for threshold, uh, this uh, kind of light, lighter precipitation, we can see that uh, this verification is using a grid, grid to grid uh, base uh, verification. So here we can see that it is, it is favoring the experiment the, the three divide experiment that we saw in the beginning that it showed uh, a larger coverage, a, a, a much a, an over forecast of the uh, precipitation. And we can see that in the ETS and also in the frequency bias, of course, because uh, overall we can see that the experiments has a very under forecast of the, uh, of the precipitation. So in summary, uh, we have some uh, we can we can draw some conclusions from from this single case of course to have more robust uh, uh, conclusions we should uh, run more experiments but from this case study we can see that the methodology that we applied seems to be appropriate for the identification of the main convective systems that are associated to these uh, to the squad line systems um, that RFS with the FE3 uh, her CCPP suite, it is able to capture the main uh, large scale patterns when we compare that with the GFS base physics. Um, that the data simulation, it improves the precipitation coverage along the coast. And also we can show that there is lower RMS E and bias, but basically during the night hours. Um, we can also say that increasing the localization and scales, it shows uh, more flow dependent characteristics, but also increases the noise. The noise. Um, that larger in, uh, localization and scales, it improved the one hour accumulated precipitation forecast overall. And that the, the super saturation removal, it also gives us a slightly better representation of the precipitation. Uh, for future work, um, we intend to um, use more appropriate method for the precipitation uh, verification, such as, for example, neighborhood method, uh, which it might be more appropriate for this case. Um, and also explore other cycling strategies. It is important to mention that this is already underway at the GSL and EMC in order to determine the best cycling strategy for the system. And we will also like to investigate um, the use of GO16 GLM data as a proxy for reflectivity data in the data simulation system. So here are some references that were used uh, during this presentation and I will be happy to take any questions. Great, thank you, Yvette. Um, so yeah, if, if you have a question, please uh, raise your hand um, and then we'll have you just unmute and ask it. Um, so Jimmy. Yeah, hi, that was a very interesting talk, thanks. Um, I had two questions. Um, one was, do you see this peak in the uh, error, the analysis error at 18Z every day? Do you know why it's such a strong peak then? And the second one is, 
it looks like you have a cooling bias during the forecast with the data simulation. Are you showing the, the temperature verification? And that would perhaps imply the data simulation has too many, has too much clouds. Are you adding clouds during the data simulation process? Or can you think of any reason you may have too many clouds? Um, no, we are not adding cloud to the to our data simulation uh, system. We are uh, actually, uh, yeah, it is it is it is uh, from the you know temperature wind and other uh, variables. And for the radiance data simulation, we are we using clear sky, so we we are not adding any cloud information in our experiments. Um, here, this 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 uh, verification, it was very hard because we had very, very uh, little amount of points to compare. So I believe that if we had a, a larger amount of data, the results will show us, you know, a, a slightly different different picture. However, we can see that here, the three divided experiments, it actually captures very well that, you know, it, it, it wasn't as good as the others but you know when we see the grid to grid it wasn't you know it showed that three divided was better when we can see that it wasn't actually so uh yeah i'm not using um cloud information in my experiments um and yeah this this bias behavior is it is uh you know to continue investigating to see why this is happening and this this uh, is a system under development so yeah we are getting kind of the this, you know, first results. And in this area, it's kind of the very first results. Yes. And I forgot your first question. Yeah, the Sorry. strong peak at 18Z every day in the analysis. Yeah. You showed that, I think oh. it was like the number 20, for example, the slides. Do you remember? Slide 20, you can go to actually. Okay, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> this 18Z yeah. peak. Yeah. We are also wondering about these spikes here at 20, uh, yeah, at 20, um, it is basically 21 uh, okay. or um, 18 uh, Z. We believe that this is related to the convection that is occurring at these hours, but also because of this cycling uh, strategy, it shows that the errors are kind of increasing, 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 and then at zero, zero, it decreases because we are using the call start. So if we had, for example, our leaf, um, early cycling we will see kind of that you know increase in the in the in the bias a little bit more clear but here it shows this big spike um which might be you know because of the cycling strategy strategy that we are using yeah thank you thank you for your questions Give just another minute for if anybody has a question. Okay, well, if there's not any more questions. Um, thank you again, Yvette. And um, I think we'll. Okay, thank you everybody for joining. Yeah, thank you for all coming. <laughs>